<laughs> Radio Raheem here with Freddie Roadshow. We stand on the, you know, uh, Kodo moniker on the, in the gym downstairs yeah, here. Actually, the Pacquiao one should be here by tomorrow. You're switching it out. You have to. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you, you know, you still, they're both great fighters and so forth, and uh, I, I honestly feel that fight's going to happen, so I'm preparing for Pacquiao to come. Oh, wow. All right. So why do you f honestly feel now that that fight's going to happen? What makes you think more now than before? Uh, Floyd talked on TV twice at the basketball game. It's just to get him to open his mouth is very unusual. He wants to fight. Aaron wants to fight. I want to fight. Manny wants to fight. Les Moomboos wants to fight more than all of us. I mean, so I think a lot of good names want this fight. And usually when those high people want it, they get it. Now, there's been a lot of talk that you were already looking for sparring partners to, uh, you know, mimic Floyd, and you guys are basically starting a camp for Floyd. Is this true? Well, I have sparred. I've done a little bit of research on Floyd and a little bit of research on sparring partners because Floyd uh, that I watched five years ago is a little different than Floyd today, so I'm watching a little bit more closer fights to not old fights. What's different about Floyd today than yesterday? He still doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He has a couple flaws, but with the southpaw sense, it might help him in some ways and it might hurt him in some ways. It's a very tactical fight. I have to come up with the perfect game plan for this one. This is good. This is going to be the biggest challenge ever. And I like challenges and I, I think my guy can pull it off, but it, it won't be easy. Now, you say all these people want this fight so badly. Obviously, Floyd wasn't on the list of people that you mentioned. No, what? He, was. he talked in two basketball games. He must want it. So then what's holding it up? That I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was more on the inside. But I, I don't have that privilege. I'm just a trainer. Now, it's said that Floyd and Manny talked personally, and now they were trying to work out the differences. Has Manny talked to you about any of that? Is that actually taking place? I talked to Michael Kahn's about that, and Michael says that it is taking place. So I, I, I don't think he has any reason to lie to me. That's got to be a good sign. All right, well, before we pull up the, all the Kodo monikers and everything, let's talk a little bit about it's Kodo. It's going over. Oh, it's just going over. Okay. You know what's under there, right? What, just, just cushion? Man, Manny's under there. Oh. <laughs> This easy. Marvin's really good at doing the rings. You are a diplomat, to say the least. Well done. Um, so, what do you want next for Cody? I mean, it seems like the, the world is open to him, and he could even be uh, a derailing factor from Pacquiao Mayweather if Mayweather wanted to go that way. So, what is it that you want next for Cody that you think is in his best interest? Well, Canelo Alvarez is my first choice. And I. I, I I'm, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get that fight because I thought it was a great fight for Miguel, and but you know, uh, both fighters want to be like on the A side. But my guy, you know, my guy has the belt, and the other guy says he sells more pay-per-view tickets. But so it didn't happen. Uh, now uh, I hope Kirkland like steps steps aside, maybe let that happen. But I, I haven't asked Bob that yet. So, but I, I think I know where he's going to tell me where to go. So everybody speculated that Cotto didn't make that fight because he was laying out hoping to get the Mayweather fight. Is there any truth to that? Not to my knowledge because that was, you know, I speak to Gabby and we don't speak about opponents until he gets those three names. And then the last time he called me, I'm training one of his fighters now, the one who lost to the Mexican-Russian. No, he had a draw and they're fighting a, he's fighting a title eliminator. And if he wins, he'll fight a rematch. And that's all me and uh, Gabby are talking about right now. He doesn't, ha he does not have those three names to give me yet, is what he told me. All right, and lastly, we got Ruslan Provodnikov also down here. And um, it's said that, you know, he's going to fight uh, Lucas Matisse. Oscar's pretty much confirmed that. Are you guys preparing for Lucas? Is that, as far as you're concerned, a done deal? Uh, you know, again, I, I don't like, I don't sign contracts and so forth, but I think it's, I think, I think it's done deal because we're starting to work towards that a little bit. I think the day, the day may get pushed back a little bit though. So training camp might not start so soon. Um, I got him on a alternate day training camp at this place just to stay close to striking distance because I don't think they have a firm date yet. 
for fans, that seems to be the most anticipated fight that is as, as close to happening as it is. Everyone thinks it's definitely going to happen. Talk to me about the matchup there. This seems to be like could be a make or break fight for Ruzalan. How does he match up against? Well, you know, when someone asked me about that fight, I said somebody's going to get knocked out. I don't say who, but I say something. I think my guy has a better chin. I think my guy has a little better punch. But you know, this guy is a tough guy. This is not an easy fight for either man. This is. This is fights I like. This is a real, real fight. They both seem to be, I mean, obviously you like Ruzalan, but you would, you would like Montise too. He fights kind of a style that you appreciate. Uh, I would love to train guys like that, you know, because like my guys are dedicated and work hard. And stuff like this. I like guys like him because that's what he does. I mean, he's not going to lose the fight because he gets tired or something, you know. He's not that type of guy. You know, he knows he's a world-class fighter and you know, he's so close to take, getting that step back into the the higher level, you know, but he's so close to going the other way too, you know, so this is a very meaningful, meaningful fight for both guys. And lastly, Fred, when you think Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, the fans, you know, they're on the tip of their seats always looking for any kind of new information, on a percentage wise, tell me, how much percentage wise do you think this fight happens in May of this year? You know, Floyd going on national TV, which he doesn't do much, he doesn't speak much. Uh, when he says something that, that we haven't signed yet, but we both want the fight, um, that means a lot to me. I mean, that that's not his character. So, that yeah, means a lot to me, a lot to me. I think, you know, Manny stressed to, to Bob that he wants to fight. Uh, I think uh, Les Moonvos is like uh, one of the biggest powers of making this fight happen with CBS. Um, Al Heyman, I you know I don't know Al Heyman that well, but I did have a meeting with him once, and he's you know very nice guy, very intelligent person. Uh, I like his idea about giving these guys exposure with these TV fights because. When ABC and CBS and those channels have all went out of business, we stopped getting those guys getting exposure on free TV. So that's why we have no really pay-per-view fighters developing. So you feel like Al Heyman's good for boxing? Well, I think he's good for boxing. I think it could be, but uh, on the other hand, you're thinking he's trying to maybe start a monopoly a little bit also. And they don't want to work with each other. This guy doesn't want to work with that guy and that guy. You know, they have to learn to, they all have to work together, you know. I mean, look at King and Aram, they hate each other. I seen, I seen King go in the ring one time during the Aram fight, and I saw Aram rip his coat off, <laughs> right off his back. So, you know, but they, they still made the best fights. Well, I appreciate you always working with me. I'll let you go, Radio Raheem, with Freddie Roach.